I just wanted to talk a little bit about gratitude since we just had Thanksgiving and kind of wrapping up the month of November. And I was contemplating gratitude, especially in this year that has been crazy. And a lot of times we're thinking, well, what the heck do I have to be grateful for this year? Um, and I came up with four different thoughts about gratitude. The first thought is that gratitude really is a choice. We can choose to be grateful and find the positive things, or we can choose to be ungrateful and maybe critical and focus on the negative stuff. And trust me, in the past, I have for sure been super guilty of going down the negative spiral in my own mind. And it's something that I still have to constantly work on. And so gratitude is one of those tools that helps us instantly to switch and change our perspective. So just like fear and love can't coexist, neither can being grateful and being negative. Um, when we're grateful, we are focused on the positive. And obviously when we're ungrateful, we're focusing on what we don't have and on the negative. So my first thought was, yes, gratitude is definitely a choice. And I would also say we don't have to be grateful necessarily for these horrible events that happen in our lives. Like we don't have to be grateful for the pandemic, but we can be grateful in the pandemic. So finding the silver lining to life's messiness and the ups and downs um, that happen in life, because that is obviously just the nature of living. And so to be focused on gratitude and to make it a choice, something that I have done in the past and uh, actually really want to do it more now that I'm talking about it, because I know how effective it is, is to have a gratitude journal. And just every night before bed, jot down some things that you're grateful for, because I don't know about you, but a lot of times it's at night when my mind can start spiraling off into these negative places. So if I consciously and intentionally focus on what I am grateful for, then my mind has no choice but to focus on the positive. So I just want to share a, uh, an entry from my gratitude journal from a while ago, um, and it's just entitled Grateful. I am grateful for good people. I am grateful for true friends and deep conversations. I am grateful for God and the mystery of what that even means. I am grateful for pain and for relief. I am grateful for challenges and obstacles. I am grateful for peace and tranquility. I am grateful for endings and for beautiful beginnings. I am grateful for the fight and I am grateful for the rest. I am grateful for laughter that soothes my soul. I am grateful for iced coffee on a hot day. I am grateful for surprises on my doorstep. I am grateful for a dog who loves me regardless. I am grateful for tears cried and tears dried. I am grateful for plans and goals. I am grateful for the present moment. I am grateful that I don't have to have all the answers I am grateful when I can embrace it all, the ups and downs, the rain and the rays, the dark and the light, the uncertainty and the conviction, the past and the unknown future. I am grateful for life. So that's just one example of a segment of this gratitude journal that I 
was doing at, at one point. So I would just encourage you to pick up this practice at least a couple times a week and jot down the things that you are grateful for and watch how it literally shifts your mind and it shifts your perspective because what we focus on definitely expands. So that's my first thought. Gratitude is a choice and that we need to be intentional about being grateful. My second thought actually came from a quote that Tony Robbins is really famous for saying, and that is that when we trade expectations for appreciation, our world changes, or at least the perspective that we have of the world. So I want to show you, I'm going to share my screen. I want to show you something hilarious um, that I saw that is very appropriate for this year. So travel plans in 2020 be like, here's my expectations going to this amazing place, right? World traveling. And here's the reality. Dishes in the dishwasher or whatever that thing is. Dishes in the, <laughs> in the drain. Um, and that truly is, it kind of sums up 2020, right? We have these expectations for what our life is going to be like or look like. And then when reality happens and that doesn't pan out and it's not exactly what our expectation is, we can tend to feel defeated, discouraged, resentful, angry, irritated, bitter, and we suffer because our expectations don't match up to the reality. But as Tony Robbins says, when we trade our expectation for appreciation, everything shifts and we don't suffer internally anymore. So just a quick example in my own life, when I was a little girl, my dad was my hero as Many little girls look up to their fathers. Um, I was just the same, you know. My dad was everything in my eyes and could do no wrong. And then when I was a teenager, I found out that he had betrayed my mom pretty much for their entire marriage and that he had been living a double life and had not been the person that he had portrayed or told everybody that he was. And so for years, I was devastated. And because I had this expectation of what a dad should be, I had this, this expectation of what I wanted him to be. And it didn't match the reality of, of what he was or the choices that he had made. So finally, when I was able to let go of the expectation that my dad was perfect. And when I was able to let go of that and instead appreciate the good things about my dad, the way he would laugh with his entire being, the way he was friendly and listened really well, the way he wrote corny, cheesy poems that now I tend to do the same thing. Uh, so I started to be able to appreciate the things about my dad that were great. And then also appreciate the lessons that I learned from his betrayal and from his lies and from him not being who he said he was because I realized that I didn't want to be that way that I wanted to be authentic and I wanted to have integrity in my life that what I did behind closed doors matched who I was out in front of everybody. I wanted to be this open book who was sincere and authentic. And so I learned that lesson from his mistakes. 
So I was able to pull out the things that I appreciated and focus on those things instead of just focusing on this expectation that I had that was not the reality. So that's my second thought is to trade our expectation with appreciation. And when we do that, we don't have to suffer needlessly inside. So my third thought, we have gratitude is a choice, trading expectation for appreciation. My third thought is that one of the most important things that we can do is to be grateful and appreciate ourselves. And that for some reason is so hard to do sometimes because we are our own worst critic. We will tear ourselves down with our internal dialogue and even our external dialogue sometimes. And I was the biggest culprit of doing this in the past. Obviously I still struggle with it, but I'm aware. And so I can change my thoughts now where in the past, I would just let myself tear myself down horribly. And I know I can say that, but I want to give you like a very real concrete example when, of what it was like when I felt that way, because it was truly this prison that I created for myself in not appreciating myself and tearing myself down. So I want to read something to you that I wrote um, several years ago when I was having this real deep self-loathing and lack of appreciation and lack of gratitude for, for myself. And this is what I wrote. The night stretches on. Beyond infinity, it goes on and on. I wrestle with my demons. They are suffocating me once again, clawing at my soul, causing me to question my sanity. The demons feel larger than life, and they pin me down. Finally, something inside of me shifts, and I am able to wiggle free. As I do, the tears come violently, as if being trapped inside for a lifetime. I open my mouth and scream, but no sound comes out. I scream silence again and again. I get up and go to the bathroom. I turn on the light and look myself in the mirror. You are hideous, I tell myself. I hate you so much. I whisper through the tears. As I say so, I feel the demons retreating. Even they are not interested in me anymore. Man, you see, even reading that brings up all of those emotions and that deep self-loathing and hate that I had for myself. And so, I would say one of the main things that we can do is focus on being grateful for ourselves. Focus on appreciating all that we are and all that we are not. And that's what I did slowly through the years. I have intentionally spoken to myself differently. I have looked in the mirror and I have said, I love you, Janice. You are amazing. You are beautiful. You are strong. I created a new I am statement because my old one was that I was not enough. I was hideous. I was horrible. I was unlovable. That was my old I am statement. So I had to intentionally create a new one. And my new I am statement is I am a powerful, confident, and purposeful woman. So I would encourage you to truly develop love, 
appreciation, kindness toward yourself. Because from that place, when we are able to be grateful, truly grateful and appreciative of who we are, then that overflows to everybody else. And then we can show gratitude and give fully from that place to other people and show up as the best versions of ourselves, show up the way that we are truly meant to show up in this world to make a difference. So that's my third thought is that self-love and gratitude and appreciation for ourselves should come first so that we can then help others. It's like putting the oxygen mask on yourself first before helping other people. It makes a huge difference in the impact that we can make in this world. And finally, my thought number four is kind of the, the golden rule. Treat others as you would want them to treat you. So allowing that self-appreciation and the gratitude we have for self to expand out and to give and serve and love and appreciate other people. And that is magical when we are able to do that from an authentic true, loving place. So I was standing in line at the DMV the other day. They had this outside line that you had to stand on, you know, stand in because of COVID. And so the line, I mean, you guys know the DMV anyway. So this line stretches around the corner and it's just crazy. You're waiting and waiting. Well, we had already been waiting for probably 45 minutes. And there's a guy in front of me, six feet in front, because they have it all marked marked out. And we're getting close to the tent where we then do our initial check-in. And the guy in front of me, after waiting for 45 minutes, turns around, he's looking at the, the line in the back, and he's like, hey, um, I'm going to trade spots with that guy over there, uh, just, you know, just so you know, like, you know, hold this spot open. So I was like, okay. And I look back. And he walks over to a man in uniform. Oh my gosh, the story makes me cry because it's so beautiful. Uh, he walks over to the man in uniform who's at the end of the line, had just gotten there. And I see him talking and pointing to the spot, basically saying, take my spot. Let's trade places because I appreciate everything that you do for our country. And it was so beautiful to see this interaction and this exchange. And the man in uniform thanked him profusely and, and declined and said, no, 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 you know, I'm fine. I'll wait in line, but thank you. I appreciate it. And so the guy was able to come back and stand in, in his place again. But I just thought, wow. That's amazing to actually, it's one thing to feel gratitude for other people, and it's a totally different thing for your actions to match and to actually show your gratitude for other people and to do it in a way that's sacrificial because that guy would have had to wait another hour on top of what he had already waited in line just to show this man, how appreciative he was of his service. So that to me just encapsulated this whole concept of showing our appreciation for other people and giving from that place of deep, deep gratitude. So those are my four thoughts about gratitude. Number one, that it's a choice that we need to be intentional and keeping a gratitude journal is amazing. Number two, that for us to not suffer needlessly, it would be a really good idea for us to trade our expectation for appreciation 
our world will completely transform. Our inner world, our mind, the way we view things will transform for the better. Number three, my thought number three is that gratitude really starts with ourselves and being grateful for who we are, being grateful for our gifts, being grateful for everything that is good in us and proclaiming that to ourselves, proclaiming that out loud, writing it down so that we truly believe our value and we truly believe that we are something to be hugely grateful for. And my fourth and final thought is that as we have this self-appreciation, gratitude for self, that overflows into being grateful for other people. And we are able to then show that gratitude with our actions, just like this amazing man at the DMV who wanted to switch places um, with, with the man in uniform. So I am just so grateful for each and every one of you. I'm grateful for this group. I'm grateful for my health. And let's keep making this an amazing, amazing journey. Mwah. Love you guys.